Hey, I'm Marty from Spring Ahead Media Solutions. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use customer journeys in MailChimp to organize your audience. Traditionally, we think about automations as like something happens and then someone gets sent an email. But with customer journeys, you also can use it to label people, tag, untag, to archive contacts who are no longer of use in your audience. So I'm gonna walk you through the whole thing. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and give this a thumbs up. I put out MailChimp tutorials all the time. So first we're going to head over here to automations and all journeys and we're going to create a journey. You can go ahead and name it whatever makes sense to you. And now we need to choose a starting point. The way that automations work is they work in the future. You set them up and then when something happens, when there's a trigger, it then causes whatever you've decided to have happen, happen, right? So in the case of traditionally like a welcome email, when someone signs up for your email newsletter, that's the trigger. And then the action is that they get sent a welcome email. Now we're not using this for sending emails. So let me show you some starting points you might use to organize your audience. I'm gonna start over here with contact activity. Tagging is a way to organize your audience. So we're probably not gonna use that one for this. You can use when someone signs up, but more specifically how they sign up. So you can choose if they sign up through your contact form versus through an email sign up form or through a landing page versus something else. If you have your MailChimp integrated with some sort of other system you use for contact data and one of the fields in their contact information changes, so maybe they go from a prospect to a customer, you can have that be the trigger that that field, when it changes to customer, then something else happens. You can also have things change when someone is manually added. And then this has, these groups are another way of organizing audience that I'll talk about a bit in a second. If you're doing e-commerce and you have your MailChimp account integrated with your e-commerce with WooCommerce or Shopify or BigCommerce, one of those, then you can have triggers that are associated with them buying any product or a specific product. This is one I use often. So if they buy a gluten-free product, you then can label them with a tag inside the system as gluten-free and send them emails specifically about that interest of theirs. Marketing activity is one that anyone can use. This is based on how they're interacting with your emails. So you set it up before you send your email and if they open an email on a specific topic, then you can label them that they were interested in that topic. Did not open, clicked any link within there or clicked a specific link. I love this one again for welcome emails. If you're covering several different topics, you can track which one they clicked on and then know more specifically and email them more specifically about what they've shown interest in. For the sake of this example today, I'm going to click opens the email. Now I'm going to go ahead and pick an email that's already in my drafts because again, automations need to be set up before the thing happens. This is going to be an email about upcoming audience organization classes. And so when I send this out, someone who opens this email is more likely to be interested in this topic. If I want to be more specific about it, I could do someone who clicks on the information in this email or someone who clicks specifically the link to learn more about that class. Below here, you can also segment even further. So this would be adding a filter. Maybe I only want people who have not taken a class with me before or only people who are new to my audience. Any of these fields here you can sort by. And this is the same screen as you would use for segmenting in other parts of MailChimp. Now we've got our starting point and let's talk about what journey points we can add in here. As you can see, MailChimp is recommending that we use tags here and that's what we're going to do. Um, tags are a label that can be added to your contacts and your contacts can have any number of labels on them. They can have, I believe up to 50. So go ahead and tag as much as you need for use with your emailing. So now we're going to use this top drop down menu. You can choose a tag that you already have, or you can create a new one. Marty, class, and click to create. And then we're going to choose if we're going to add that tag or remove it. So again, 
In this instance, we're going to add the tag that they're interested in an audience organization class, but maybe if they interact in a certain way, it actually means that they're no longer interested in that type of thing, and you can use this to remove a tag. And then we would just hit continue, and this would roll. But let me show you the other items that you could put in here. Now, if we scroll down here to actions, we have group and ungroup. Groups are similar to tags in that they're a way of labeling your contact. The difference is that groups can be front facing, which means you can have a sign up form where people decide to put themselves in a group or not in a group. Also, if they go to the preference center, they can again, choose to be in or out of a group, whereas tags are totally internal. You can automatically unsubscribe someone based on their activity. You can update their contact information and that's what's in one of the fields in their email. So maybe you need to know whether people are local or not because you have e-commerce and you have a local. And so for instance, you can make the action to update their contacts and update the field from location. And if they click on a button that says I am local, then you'll change that field to read local. Let's see what else we've got here. And the last one here is archive. Archiving takes contact out of your contact list in MailChimp. It means you'll no longer be paying for them, but it retains all of their information. And so if they were to resubscribe or re-engage in some way, they'll come back into your subscribers with all of their previous data. I should mention that any of these other points can be used in here as well. So you can also have a time delay where after a certain amount of time, one of these things happen, you can mix this in with a journey that sends emails. So maybe they send an email and then they get a tag, or then if they don't interact after a certain, within your journeys, they get archived. Any of these audience organization points can be included in a journey that involves emails as well. Let me pop this tag one back in here just so that we can complete things. I'm going to hit continue. You can enter this if you wish. We're going to be managing our audience with this and we're going to turn it on. And just like that, now when I send that email, people who open it will be tagged. I hope that was helpful. Ask me questions in the comments. I am here to help and uh, have a great day.